I met Charles 19 years ago in Edinburgh. He was a petty criminal, a purse snatcher, a lucky boss in his neighborhood and already in the sights of the law. And I was young. And oh, how reckless bad boys were attractive then. We got married a couple of months later while traveling to my hometown in Paris. It wasn't so much a romantic journey, but rather a way to leave waters he couldn't navigate anymore. We traveled and lived here and there before finally settling in this ordinary city. We lived peacefully for a while, but how Charles put money on the table, I never really knew. And asking questions wasn't an option. The more mysterious, the better I used to think. The truth ain't funny, my father said, otherwise we'd spend our time seeing it. A few years after our marriage, he disappeared. Just like that. No word, no letter, no phone call. The only trace left of him was a bunch of false papers and a couple of bullets. Did he end up in a random lake wearing concrete shoes? Did he live for a pair of long legs and a pretty face? I never knew. Great lovers only make bad husbands, my mother said. Time passed on, and five years ago, I finally received it. The phone call. Charles Higgins had just died in a criminal gunfight. The final word in an unanswered riddle. I eventually accepted to become the widow of a shadow and moved on and turned into everything he had always hated, everything he spent his life avoiding. A snooper, a McCracker, someone who asks questions. Five unsolved murders seemed enough to make his ghost come back. And what a ghost! The purse snatcher had turned into a much sinister beast. How deep did he dig himself into the underworld? Was his death announcement just a mistake? A lie? A smokescreen? I thought I had turned over a new leaf, but the end of the story seemed yet to unfold. And now here I am, hanging on by a thread, waiting for a sign. A clue, anything that would stop me looking over my shoulder at every street corner. Mrs. Higgins, I've brought you some supplies as you asked. I'll put them on the desk. There was only one bottle of whiskey left, though. Thank you, Nelly. Blanche Higgins. Hi, Blanche. Jacob here. Anything new? I think so. We've sent Charles Higgins' description to every police station in the state, and we have good reason to believe he was spotted a few times in the company of unsavory individuals. He's still alive, but he's not alone. I hope that isn't too hard to hear. At this stage, I can't say I'm surprised, honestly. Anything else? 
Maybe this whole situation is now being taken up in higher circles. Some shady politicians are starting to fear for their little businesses or their lives. Are they? This whole thing appears to be even more unclear than I thought. Some people are settling scores here. And I guess I'm now a potential suspect since my former husband is involved. <laughs> Don't worry too much about that. But next time you're choosing your husband, take a minute to consider. Why did you even marry this guy in the first place? Oh, come on, Jacob, have you never been young? Or should I remind you of the foolish things you did when you were 20? That won't be necessary, thank you very much. But let's get back to what we have right now. Somebody has actually witnessed the latest crime. Judge Hudson's murder. I thought you'd want to be the first to get a complete interview. Well, how thoughtful of you. Although you will clearly take advantage of a full report of this interview, if I'm right. That would be appreciated, Blanche. Thank you. I guess I owe you a drink now. Don't I? The only thing you owe me right now, Jacob. Is your trust. Fair. And in any case, you always know where to find me. I'll have the witness sent over under escort right away. Good luck. Be careful. Goodbye. Mrs. Higgins, there's someone here for you. Thank you, Nelly. Please leave us alone. Take a seat. Make yourself at ease. Would you like a drink? I believe you're not comfortable with what you witnessed. Wrong place, wrong time, huh? I'm tempted to ask why you took so long to show up, but I guess... 
case you have your reasons. Are you okay to answer a few questions for me? Nothing formal, just casual talking and a few notes, so you can relax. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? What's your first name? Last name. Interesting. Where does this come from? What's your address? of birth. Come on. Married? Children? Where do you work? Where is that? How long have you been working there? Do you usually go to and from work with other people? Directly to home? No detour? Let's sum things up, at least the straight facts I have. On February 4th, you left your work at what? 7pm? And you entered Fairfield Street to go back directly to home. That's when you heard the gunshot and saw hot soul on the floor, and another man running towards Crystal Lane. That's it. Would you remember what this man looked like? Would a paper and a pencil help? You can sketch whatever shape or face feature you remember.
yes, I know it's never easy. Let me help. Was it this man? To start a few years. Do you usually wear glasses? Listen, the police are trying to gather everything they can to understand the criminal scheme and avoid a new murder. No one knows which big wig will be the next target, and every VIP of this city is losing their minds. member and the church. Some of these were total pigs and won't be missed, but a couple of them were actually good men and Judge Hudson was one of them. Whatever you saw or heard could be of crucial importance, look at me. Here, with your hands in your pocket, did you? Show me. A letter. Blackmail, huh? So they know you were there after all. Has Jacob already seen this? I suppose you have already run your fingers all over it. How and when did you get it? straight to the point. I wouldn't have exactly called Hudson an old slug, but we can appreciate this is striking enough. Don't worry. Jacob and his team will protect you. Mm -hmm. 
Anything else you'd like to tell me? You're free to go then. I will keep this if you don't mind. Your escort is waiting outside. I walk you to the door. Nelly, our guest is leaving. Of course. This way, please. Oh, Mrs. Higgins, the evening news has arrived. Thank you. are starting to fear for their little businesses or their lives. Mrs. Higgins, a letter for you. A letter? At this time? Who brought it? When? I don't know. He refused to give his name, but he seemed quite charming, if I may say. He left a few minutes ago. sign this letter because there's no need to. I know you knew even before you opened the envelope. A single sheet of paper may seem insignificant after years of silence, and it still might not be enough to tell you all, but I went too far, Blanche. Got hooked in by the worst people you could imagine. They promised me wealth and they promised power. They promised me everything. I really thought it wouldn't last. I thought I would quickly get enough, but it's never enough. It's a never ending cycle of greediness and destruction from which I couldn't run away. I tried though. I swear I tried five years ago, 
but I didn't make it. And everything became a lot harder after that. I had to assume my role as pawn once again. But today, finally, I'm breaking the cycle. As I write this, I'm preparing for my escape, knowing that my time is running out. I'm not sure I can call this redemption, but in the envelope, you'll find a list of all the people involved in the recent murders and where to find them. Schemers, right-hand men, underlings, along with the location of a locker at a train station. It's where I put all the pieces of evidence I've been gathering these last years. I know you and your friend Kane will handle this just right, but the choice is up to you. No need to rush, though. As you read this, the crooked senator has already kicked the bucket. And rest assured, your witness will be safe. As for me, life here is over. I'm setting sails for another, another country far from here. Try to forgive me if you can and find happiness in this world if you can. surprising districts of the city. Although one of the suspects is still missing and presumed dead, the police have now locked up every criminal involved in the recent macabre events, thanks to Inspector Jacob Kane's work. While his investigation methods are still unclear and controversial, he certainly succeeds where others fail. I for one believe we should not put too much scrutiny into Kane's methods. If anything, we owe him only our greatest thanks. The ends almost always justify the means. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we can now enjoy the nightlife of our good old city without fear and sleep soundly and safe and snug in our beds. All thank you to this gentleman. Bless you, Jacob Kent. Hey, Jacob. What about these strings? 